who does a world spirituality address? And if we discern carefully, we see that world spirituality is compellingly transformative actually to the four major types of people in the world today. First, the first group I would call the hundreds of millions of people I would refer to as the hundreds of millions of people who are post-traditional. That's the first type, the post-traditional, meaning the people who can no longer locate themselves within a great tradition, within a classical religion. That their experience, the way they've been brought into the world, their cultural exposures right, are such that they can't locate themselves in a religion or a great tradition. So they're post-traditional, and yet they're profoundly engaged and compelled and feel invited by spirit. And so what happens for this extremely large group of people who form the backbone of the human potential movement, of the alternative spirituality movements, right, of the retreat centers, right, of the spiritual centers, of the new age movement, right, the overwhelming majority of these people are simply, gorgeously, delightfully, but confused because they keep jumping from this teacher to that teacher, from this practice to this practice, this week's Tibetan Buddhism, next week's Kabbalah, the week after is, you know, you know Hinduism, there's a Swami, there's a rabbi, there's a guru, right? it's just very confusing, right? And the, you know, the um, institutions of higher learning right, are not universities that have standards, but actually media companies Right, that make their profit by confusing people. They send out a new program every week. There's no way people can assimilate a new program every week, right? But that's that's the that's the profit, you know, motivated business, right? Let's give you all the possibly possibilities you can possibly have, which provides in the one sense a service, but it completely confuses the marketplace, the marketplace of ideas, the marketplace of spirit. Right? People don't have a way of organizing the information. There's a lack of a larger framework which people can find their way. So world spirituality addresses the first group of who, right, as a framework with what, within which to organize all the different spiritual possibilities, right? So you kind of get a checklist. Okay, these are the things you need to hit in your spiritual practice. You need to be doing, you know, one, two, three, four, and five. And within this framework, you can actually begin to find your way. So world spirituality is an articulated framework of, of the essential nature obligation essence and invitation of spirit within which one can organize their reality right in a way that makes sense that's one critical group of people addressed by world spirituality the second group of people are people who still are in part in the great traditions they still are in part practicing in a great religion but they don't feel their identity exhausted by that great tradition but it used to be a person who was jewish they were just jewish Christian, just Christian. Muslim, just Muslim. Catholic, just Catholic. Buddhist, just Buddhist. Today, there's an emergent group of people who want to be what I call, it's a term that I, I deployed or created or coined in this context right about a year ago, I call them dual citizens. Meaning, I want to be a citizen of the larger world, and at the same time, I also want to be a loyal citizen of my particular people or my particular spiritual system. So I'm both Catholic and a citizen of world spirituality because I'm both Jewish and a citizen of world spirituality because for the first time today in the last couple hundred years and especially accelerated in the last hundred years, even more accelerated in the last 50, people don't feel that their national or religious affiliation exhausts their identity, that they have this new possibility to be a dual citizen. So that second group of people who are still in a tradition but beyond it, dual citizens are also directly impacted, directly served in a very profound way by the articulation of a world spirituality framework, vision, right, that they can align with beyond their tradition, even as they remain in the tradition. The third group of people addressed by world spirituality are the secularists. The secularist is the person who has internalized the modern critique of spirituality, the demand for evidence, which points out that spirituality and religion particularly overreached itself, and has also internalized the postmodern critique of spirituality because spirituality and religion often ignores context and claims eternity when evolution is really at play. So 
people have internalized. They, they, probably, they can't even express them. They have no, no way of expressing or articulating these two critiques that I just mentioned, the modern and postmodern critique of religion. They don't articulate them, but they've just imbibed them. Right? They've imbibed them in a way that religion is no longer relevant to them. They grow up with the assumption that the modern postmodern critique of religion have destroyed religion, that religion is no longer a viable option for a sensible, rational, rational person. It's an enormous amount of people, again, hundreds of millions of people, they, who look at religion as being pre-modern, right, as being ethnocentric, as being you know, mythic in the negative sense, a mythic god owned by a particular people, as being you know, gay bashing, right, as being in opposition to science. So for that large group of people, the articulation of a world spirituality that integrates science, that integrates the best of pre-modern, modern, modern and post-modern traditions, right, offers for the first time a compelling alternative invitation to the secularist. That's three. And finally, four, the fundamentalist. One would think that the fundamentalist is in no way affected by world spirituality, but that's also not true. The fundamentalist often feels that their fundamentalism is inappropriate or cognitively weak or, or, or in some dissonance with truth. What the fundamentalist says is, it doesn't matter to me because I want to practice goodness and virtue and beauty, right? And I want to serve God. And I can do that better in my community, right? In a more profound way in my community than any other place. And, and when the fundamentalist looks at the New Age community or the human potential communities, they seem to be so rife with lack of commitment, with lack of serious frameworks, with lack of serious compelling teaching, with a, a sense of obligation that the fundamentalist says, I just, that, that's just not interesting. I mean, that is so wishy-washy, right? It's so not serious, right? It's so narcissistic, right? It's so here today, gone tomorrow, changing every second, that it's actually not, not a viable option. But the articulation of a world spirituality which is committed, right, which is obligated, right, which is rigorous, actually for the first time creates an alternative also for the fundamentalist. So what we see is, is that the introduction of a world spirituality into right, the zeitgeist, into the discourse, completely changes the game for everyone. One, for the post-traditional person, for the post-traditional archetypal hundreds of millions of people. Two, for the people who are still in a tradition but are not exhausted in their identity by their tradition, who want to be dual citizens. Three, for the secularist who's internalized the modern and postmodern critique of religion, and for him, her, religion is no longer a viable option, but it becomes a viable option again when they're exposed to a genuine evolutionary world spirituality. And for the fundamentalist who's rejected as a genuine option the possibility of having a committed, rigorous, transformative practice right, outside of a great tradition and who views the New Age Human Potential Movement not altogether incorrectly as being soft, right, and not and not ultimately right committed. For those four groups, which are the four archetypes of spirit in the world, world spirituality completely changes the game.